Whenever you search for a product related keyword, for example, rank math review, you will see some search results having a star rating, price, and in some other product keywords like Canon EOS 90D review, you will see additional reach snippets like the pros and cons of the product where it will entice you to click to view the full list of pros and cons. Now, if you have been using rank math, you know that it is integrated with WooCommerce. So every information you add to your WooCommerce product will automatically be added to the product schema so that your product can be listed on the merchant listing experiences such as the popular product reach snippet, shopping knowledge panel, and Google Images. So what is this product schema in the schema generator for? Well, if you have been writing third-party product reviews, especially for physical products, you can use this product schema. And this video is all about helping you get those rich tips like the star rating and stuff for your review pages. Let's go. Hey, it's Jack from RankMath, the one WordPress SEO plugin that constantly strives to provide you with the fastest and the most cutting-edge SEO tools. And on this channel, we provide you with the most up-to-date SEO knowledge to help you grow your search traffic. So if you're new to our channel, consider subscribing. Now, if you are selling products on your WordPress site, we highly suggest that you use WooCommerce because all the product schemas we have are well integrated for you, even for the star rating for aggregate reviews, such as the ones you see on these sites. But you can still use the product schema if you choose not to sell with WooCommerce, just that you may need an additional plugin to get the aggregate rating schema for your product page. Our product schema in the schema generator is more for third-party or editorial reviews. All right, if you're writing a product review article on a physical products such as the Canon EOS 90D camera, then this product schema will be perfect for you. This pretty fine product schema is available for both the free and pro users of Rank Math. Just as some schema fields are not available in the free version. We'll talk more about them in a while. For now, let's talk about the product schema guidelines. Now, here are some guidelines you need to know when using a product schema. This is the product schema documentation from Google, by the way. We have left a link to this page in the description below. What you need to know are the technical guidelines, where it says the product reach results only support pages that focus on a single product. So do not add a product schema to your product category page or a page that lists multiple products. And if you add the pros and cons structured data, which we will show you in a while, you need to note that the structured data are meant for editorial product review pages. In other words, a third party reviewing products of other businesses. If you sell products on your site, meaning you are a merchant, do not use the pros and cons schema. Also, whatever that you add in this pros and cons schema fields must be visible on your product page. And if you are reviewing products such as firearms, weapons, recreational drugs, tobacco, vaping, and gambling related products, there is no point in adding a product schema because those rich results will not appear. All right, now that you know what the guidelines are, let's discover how to add the product schema to your WordPress page to get the product rich results. If you already have RankMath installed on your WordPress site, go to its dashboard. You want to make sure that the schema structured data module is toggled on so that when you visit any post or page on RankMath's tab, you will be able to see this schema option. If the module is off, you will not see this here. Click on the schema generator and you will see the product schema here. If you are using Elementor, you will find the product schema in the SEO tab, schema options, schema generator, and right here. Now let's put the free and pro version of the product schema side by side so we can easily identify the differences. On the left, it is the free version and on the right, it is the pro version. All schema fields in the free version are available in the pro version, but the pro version has additional schema fields such as the product URL, which you cannot find it here. And then the brand URL, GTIN, NPN, additional type, at manufacturer, as you can see, these fields are right above the offers, which you can't find it here, as well as the pros and cons schema fields, which is not available in the free version. As you know, the more information you can provide to the search engines, the easier it is for them to understand your content. So it is more advantageous with more available schema fields. But the most important of all is that with the pro version, you can add multiple schema types per page or post. While for the free version, you can only add one schema type. What if your product review is an article as well? As you use the product schema, it will replace the article schema. Though search engines may understand that, you missed out on an optimization opportunity with the free version. Anyway, for this video, we'll be using the pro version so that we can discuss all available schema fields. 
Now on this page, we are reviewing the Canon EOS 90D camera. Let's add a product schema for this page. Now you see this red asterisk? This is the required view for the product schema. The rest are recommended views. But what's the point of having just the required view, right? You want to provide as much information as possible without forcing it. So the product name is basically the name of the product. In our case, we are reviewing the Canon EOS 90D. So we can add that here. But if you leave this view empty, this SEO title variable will take information from the general tab and edit snippet, whatever that is added to this title field will be added as the product name. And this title variable takes information from the post or page title. If you are a third party or independent reviewer, this title will most likely be the product name with a review at the back. So instead of using the default variable, I would just customize the product name field to include just the product name. Next, the product URL, which is simply the URL of the product page. By default, this URL variable takes information from the URL of the current page you are working on, which you can find on the post or page settings. However, if the product is sold on external sites, which I presume it is going to be, since you are using the product schema for third-party reviews, you can add the external product page link here. For example, the Canon EOS 90D is sold on Amazon, and this is the product page. Let's copy the URL and paste it here. But in case you are selling your own product on this page and you are not using WooCommerce for some reason, you can leave this view empty so that the product URL will be the page URL. Anyway, in case you want to show the information included in this product schema on your page, you can use this review location to display them. You can choose to display the product schema information below the content, above the content, or on both. But if you choose not to display the information, or you choose to display it in a custom location, you can select the custom option. This is how the product schema information will look like on the page. It includes the star rating, and it can be nested in any blocks. Next, for the description, it is similar to the product name view as it takes information from the SEO description field in the edit snippet. When left empty, this description field runs its own check to get the optimal description for the page. So if what you see here makes sense to be added as the product description in the schema field, feel free to leave the description field empty, but you're welcome to customize it. Next is the product SKU, and SKU simply means stock keeping unit. It is for logistic purposes that will help you manage your inventory effectively if you are the product seller. If you are the product seller, I'm pretty sure you know what this is. But if you are a third party product reviewer, if you don't have this information, feel free to leave it blank. It is a recommended view by the way, and you can still get the product reach results without this information. Next is the brand name. We are reviewing a Canon camera, and the brand name is Canon. If you are reviewing a Nike shoe, then Nike is the brand name. It is pretty straightforward. Next, since this page is reviewing a Canon camera, I'll just go to Canon's website, copy its URL, and paste it here. Every product should have a brand or at least a company name with a website. So these information shouldn't be hard to get. Then we have the GTIN, which translates to Global Trade Item Number. It is a number that uniquely identifies a product globally, and it is usually found on the barcode of the product. Google has mentioned that if you want the products you are selling to appear properly on its merchant listing experiences, the GTIN attribute is required if the product is widely manufactured and has a GTIN. And especially for media products such as books, it is a requirement. For clothing, you will just need the brand attribute, which we have just talked about, and for other categories, if you do not have the GTIN, you will need to provide the MPN attribute instead. We'll talk about that in a while. Now, there are different types of GTIN, and if you want to learn more about it, you can visit this page. We have left the link in the description. Generally, if you are a third-party reviewer, you shouldn't be worried about this view unless you are selling products on your site, but you are not using WooCommerce. But just for demonstration sake, since Canon EOS 90D is a product that is widely manufactured, it will have a unique GTIN. So I'll just Google Canon EOS 90D GTIN, and you will notice that there are two GTIN for this product that starts with UPC. If we visit the link, you will notice that one is for just the camera body, and the other GTIN is for the body with the kit lens. And since this page is reviewing the camera with the lens, I'll go to this page and copy the GTIN so that I can paste it here. 
Next, we have the MPN attribute. It is a unique set of numbers issued by the manufacturer to identify individual products. That's the theory. But what we consumers understand is the model number of the product. So on the same GTIN page, it shows the model number. And if you go to, for example, Amazon, you will see the same model number. That is if the product is widely known. Otherwise, the model number is usually given by the manufacturer or the main distributor of the product. Again, this MPN view is optional and not required for third-party reviewers. So feel free to leave this empty if you want to. For additional type, if you think there is another schema type from schema.org that best describes this product, you can add it here. Or you can also add a link to external pages like Wikidata or Wikipedia that describes the product. For example, there is a Wikipedia page that talks about Canon EOS 90D. So I can just copy this page and paste it over in the additional type view. Now the add manufacturer option is for you if your company is the manufacturer of the product. If you toggle this on, it will use the organization information you have provided in your local SEO settings as the manufacturer information of the product. And take note that this is meant for the manufacturer of the physical product and not for intangible products. Feel free to keep this off if you are a third party reviewer. Next, as it says here, these offer fields such as the price, currency, availability, and price valid until should be left empty if this is an editorial review, which means third-party reviews. But just in case you are using this product schema for products that are not sold using WooCommerce, the price for the Canon EOS 90D is 1599 So I'll add it to this field. Do not add any dollar sign or any symbols because this field only accepts an integer. Decimal point is fine. And for the currency field, the accepted value is the ISO 4217 code. But it should be something that we are familiar with. For example, US dollars is USD, Euro dollar is EUR, Singapore dollars is SGD, Indian rupee is INR. So don't be intimidated by this ISO 4217 standard. If you need verification, just visit this page to check out the currency code. The link is in the description. Back to the product schema, if you are a product seller, if your product is in stock, that's what you will select. If it is out of stock, select sold out. And if you accept pre-order, just select this. Simple as that. In case you want to learn more about how to deal with your out of stock pages in terms of SEO, you can check out this video right here. Next, the price valid until field is for the date where the listed price is valid until. If this price is not applicable until a certain date, you want to add it here. Just select the appropriate date. Again, these fields should be left empty if you are a third-party product reviewer. Next, we have the review schema. This is where you as the reviewer shine. This field is not for aggregated customer or user rating, and also not for businesses to review their own product. This is for you as an independent product reviewer to give a rating to the product. And since I'm writing a product review article on Canon EOS 90D, I think the product is great. So 4.7 out of 5. You might have questions about what if you are reviewing multiple attributes of the product, like for example, the price, the weights, the color of the images and others, in that rating view, include the overall rating. Don't complicate things. Now for the rating minimum and maximum fields, we recommend just to leave it as one and five, since the product rich snippets are based on a maximum of five stars. And finally, the pros and cons fields. Similar to the review rating, the pros and cons fields are meant for third party or independent reviewers. If you are using these fields, know that you need to add at least two comments here, such as one pros and one cons, or two pros without any cons, and vice versa, as long as there are two statements combined. I think the Canon EOS 90D is great for both still shots and videos. And if I want to add another pro, I will go to a new line. Honestly, I can't think of any cons. Maybe it does not support USB-C data transfer and it is heavy. Now remember, whatever you write on these fields have to be shown on the page. That's one of the guidelines mentioned on Google's product schema documentation. All right, that's all the product schema fields and no schema is complete without testing it. So let's do it. Now, Google has a tool called the Rich Results Testing Tool. 
We have left a link to this page in the description. You can paste your product review page link here, or you can copy its source code and paste it here. But as a rank map user, things are much simpler for you. On the schema options, you see this eye icon, click on it, and you will see the schema markup of your entire page. Click on test with Google, and it will lead you to the same page but with all the schema codes copied over. This helps you skip quite a number of steps. Let's test the schema. And you will see the product snippets and the review snippets passed with flying colors. Which means this page is ready to be served with the star ratings and the pros and cons rich results on search engines. That's all you need to know about using our product schema markup. It's straightforward, right? If you have any questions or suggestions for improvement, do let us know in the comments. Anyway, if you find this video helpful and you want to support us, do smash that thumbs up button. We greatly appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do so to get proper SEO knowledge delivered to you. This is Jack from Rank Math. Hope to see you on our other videos.